All right, my friends, welcome back. So we have rinsed the wheels, we've rinsed the tires, we've exfoliated the tires um, with undress. Now you come into the painted part. Now the painted part, some people are all over it or some people absolutely hate doing it. Now I'm in the first camp. I absolutely love wheel cleaning. For some reason, there's just something therapeutic about it. Now let's kind of break this down. This was one of our first products in the range. Now we initially designed this for high performance traditional brakes that actually dust. Now what is so different about this wheel cleaner? This is not a fallout remover. This is not just a wheel cleaner whether it's acidic, neutral um, or an alkaline kind of base cleaner. What we've done is we've decided to split it right slab bang in the middle 50-50. Now the first part that probably most people will see if this was a silver wheel, um, especially if it's embedded, you will see um, iron fallout that has um, either sat sacrificially on the top or actually embedded itself into the clear coat of the wheel. And then we'll look at it, they'll spray, let's say, a fallout remover on, and then it, it turns purple. Normally, uh, fallout removers are uh, you know, ec extremely weak. This is just judging on the market research. They look at it, it's reactive purple. They're like, oh my God, you know, it, it's doing something. They rinse it off and then obviously they'll have to come back in and agitate it because it's done nothing. Um, and then with that, they'll think, right, I've got myself a wheel cleaner. Now this is the problem. A lot of people, a high, high majority of people are actually branding a, f a fallout remover as a wheel cleaner. Now, don't forget, you are driving on a UK, let's talk about the UK, but UK road, one, you've got oils on there, you've got tar, soot, just general road contamination. It's, it's been raining, so you've got all that other kind of gunk that's being flung up by other cars on your wheels as well. So you need to actually degrease your wheels. You know, your fallout is probably 20, 25%, depending on the car. I mean, on a car like this, it's probably a little bit higher. If you've got something German again, you look at the wheels and they kind of dust. So with this, we've got 50% of multiple, not a single, but multiple fallout actual agents in here. So if this was a silver wheel, the first thing you'll see, it starts to flash purple. Now the concentration of this alone is, you know, immense. Now on top of that, the stuff that you won't see until you start agitating it, we've got the other 50% of the actual formulation in actual wheel cleaning degreases. Now the wheel cleaning degreases, as I said, are very important because there are other things that are on the wheel that are being picked up either by driving through them, you know, past them or around them. Um, unfortunately, we don't live in a NASA kind of space environment where there's no things kind of dropping. So as soon as you start agitating it, you will see the puff of um, beautiful white, well, white at first, <laughs> but white foam, until you start agitating, it starts turning to brown foam. Um, but white foam, and that is the degrees is just starting to get activated. Now, what a lot of people will see, imagine you're going to apply this on, say, a silver wheel. The reason I keep saying silver is because you'll be able to see this is like a dark gray color. Um, when you start actually spraying the wheels on the wheels and you let it dwell 30 to 60 seconds, you'll actually start seeing the reaction of, you know, black and green and gray. And this is because it's starting to actually touchlessly, chemically break down everything. And if you were to start then obviously agitating it with something like a wheel woolly, this just kind of releases the complete tension. So 50-50, very good. You can use this on the paint during your decon step for, again, multiple reasons because you've got um, iron fallout embedded into the paintwork, again, which can only be really, if you want to do it properly, removed kind of touchlessly. And then you've got the wheel cleaning degreases, which are very important at pH neutrality of seven, which means if you, they do dry on the wheel or in this case on the paint, you're not going to cause any damage. So this is a decom product. This is a maintenance product. This is, again, high performance brakes. This is what, what it was originally designed for. Now, if you are watching this video and you are saying, Nick, I don't have um, high performance brakes. I've got a, I don't know, a one liter Ford Fiesta, a Vauxhall Corsa or something like that. Even better, my friend, or friends, um, because if you haven't got high performance brakes, you're actually gonna use a lot less of this product because you haven't got as much contamination to kind of clean up. So once again, you need to always, when you're cleaning wheels, rinse the wheels down. I prefer to release 
this car's been tracked and raced and all sorts because James is an absolute madman. Um, so on here, there is, again, dirty things, but also rocks and stuff like that. So you want to release the loose things. So a quick rinse is all you need now. You can spray barrel first, face first, really doesn't matter. Once again, you're going to even coverage. That's all you need. Now, instantly, hopefully the camera's picking that up. I could see up close just an instant reaction. So I do that and it's just absolutely disgusting. Now, not only, by the way, this is not even purple just yet. As I said, it's just, a brownie colour, so James, I don't know where you've driven through, maybe an oil slick or something, not too sure, you know, but now it's starting to turn purple. So this is a two-in-one formulation that is kind of working in tandem with each other, but not with each other. So while that's working, what I would recommend is, again, with all my tools, I like to give them a quick rinse. So I've got my detail factory brush up here. Now I'll give you a tip. If you're working on say your wheel, so when I work on my car, um, I don't do this. So for example, what I'm talking about is preloading the brush. So I like to do one spray and that basically means you've got um, wheels on here, wheels in there. It's unbelievable. So it's kind of almost double the strength. Now if it's your personal car weekly, don't bother because um, it should be spick and span. But on a car like this, that's flashing as badly as this, I'm gonna do this trick. So what you're gonna see, I mean, just instantly, as I said, the white foam for now, it's not gonna be white for much longer, but you'll see it just, it puffs up instantly. There's your degreases just eating into the kind of dirt and oils and all that sort of stuff. So again, you know, with with a professional grade cleaner that is not weak, watered down, or just made by people who don't care, you do not need to come in here and just look like you're trying to kill something, right? The wheel cleaner is doing a job. Let the wheel cleaner do it. Don't waste your valuable energy. So as you can see here, all I'm doing is agitating it very loosely not doing anything strenuous. You basically, imagine you're painting your most beautiful picture and you're moving the paint around. That's the goal. If you start coming in here, it causes other problems. You could potentially scratch the wheel if you do catch something. And that just kind of shows that you're not actually cleaning anything. That is your manual agitation power. Literally that. There we are. Like literally have some fun with this. You can go into every single nook and cranny that you can ever imagine. There we are. So that's the face done. And then for this, again, for the barrels, in my opinion, there's only the one choice of brush that you can ever have in the world. It's the real deal wheel woolly. Um, now, just using my personal experience, these are big, big breaks. So you're gonna be using um, the smallest one, my little toothpick. If you want to preload it, one, two, so it's on both sides. Have you noticed how I sprayed it in front of the wheel? So in case there is any oversprays, I'm actually not wasting any product. It's going back into the wheel. Literally, again, just move it around. Basically, um, once nothing in, in this life can be dissolved, unless you're talking like serious, serious things, right? But in our world, nothing should be dissolvable because if it's being dissolved, it's way too strong and it's dissolving more than just the dirt. So, premium grade wheel cleaner. What it's designed to do, it, it's, it's not moving the dirt or the fallout. It's literally almost 
lifting off the surface it's kind of suspended now whether it's you know a wheel woolly or a face brush or anything down that nature your job is the final step of the professional clean you're, you're just moving it like whoop you're, you're scooping it and then your final rinse has now got a true suspension of you know dirt and product and all that type of stuff and on your final rinse is going to be removed right so as i said watch this purple a little bit of black a little bit of green so as you could see it's pulled the full spectrum of contaminants now of course the most obvious thing to do is now everything that's been suspended do not let it dry rinse it in a, a kind of orderly fashion and the wheel will be spotless There we are guys, that is how you professionally clean a wheel that is traditionally, you know, non-carbon ceramic. This wheel is got high performance brakes. It's certainly got a high performance driver who likes to use his brakes because he's going too fast, James. <laughs> and obviously as a, as a byproduct, you're gonna get wheels that get, of course, contaminated, extremely dirty, um, and you need to look after them. One simple product, it covers both areas of the spectrum and you have a perfect wheel every single time. I hope this has helped, as always, um, and I will catch you on the next stage with the next product. I'll see you guys soon.